Welcome to the Picodemia course on the basics of semiconductors. This lecture covers the reverse recovery. Let's start. By the time you finish this lesson, you will learn the transient response of the diode from the on to off states and the reverse recovery mechanism. In all the lectures related to the PN junction so far, I mainly explained the SL state behavior of the PN junction in equilibrium and under the forward and reverse biases. In this lecture, you are going to learn the transient behavior of the PN junction from the on state to off state. For a reason that I will later explain in this lecture, this transient behavior is called the reverse recovery. From the previous lectures, we know that a diode can be forward biased, unbiased, and reverse biased. When the, when the diode is forwardly biased, the minority charge carrier concentration across the length of the diode looks like this. Close to the edges of the depletion region, we have extra minority charge carriers, and by moving away from the depletion region, they reduce until they are equal to the equilibrium concentration. When the diode is not biased, we have two flat lines representing the minority charge carrier concentration on both sides. And when the diode is reversely biased, the concentration of minority charge carriers reduces by approaching the depletion region edges. Now, Imagine that the diode is forwardly biased and all of a sudden I bias it reversely. Of course, before we can uh, get to the reverse bias CD state situation, the diode has to pass through the unbiased state. This means that we are dealing with a short of transient behavior. Let's use these two diagrams to plot the voltage over the diode and current through the diode. To aid the discussion, let's use this simple switching circuit using which I can put the diode in forward or reverse bias. By default, the switch in the circuit is in the on state. Due to the polarity of the voltage source VF, the diode is forwardly biased. VF is larger than the built-in voltage VBI. In this scenario, the current through the resistor is Vf minus the built-in voltage divided by R. I name this current I0. Let's plot the waveforms of the diode current and voltage to see how they look like. The voltage of the diode is Vbi and the current through the diode is I0. I want also to plot the minority charge carrier diagram. This plot is important since by using it, I can more effectively illustrate how the transition from the on to off states takes place. Under the forward bias, we have an extra accumulation of minority charge carriers at the edges of the depletion region. And by moving outward from the depletion region edges, the concentration exponentially reduces until it merges at PN0 and NP0. At the moment T0, I decide to change the switch position to the off. Now due to the polarity of the R, we expect the diode to turn off and does not conduct current in the forward direction and conduct only a tiny amount of current called the reverse saturation current. This transition does not happen all of a sudden and it takes some time. Let's see what takes place after T0. At T0, the positive terminal of VR is connected to the N semiconductor and the negative terminal to the P semiconductor. In the N semiconductor, the minority charge carriers are holes and in the P semiconductor, they are electrons. Due to the way VR is connected to the diode, the minority charge carriers are repelled from the metallic contacts and they are shoved to the other side. This means that electrons as the minority charge carriers in the P semiconductor are pushed to the N semiconductor and the holes as the minority charge carriers of the N semiconductor are pushed to the P semiconductor. 
If you pay attention to the direction of the movement of the minority charge carriers, you'll notice that the current direction is reversed now. The amplitude of this current is shown by IRM. Hereafter, the discharge of the minority charge carriers at the edges of the depletion region continues. And therefore, the concentration of the minority charge carriers gets smaller and smaller at the edges of the depletion region. During this time, the reverse current level remains at IRM. By looking at the minority charge carrier concentration diagram, you'll find that at T1, the minority charge carrier concentration diagrams become flat. This means that the diode has reached the equilibrium state. The time between T0 and T1 is called the storage time Ts. After T1, the discharge of the minority charge carriers on both sides continues, and as time passes, less mobile minority charge carriers remain at the edges of the depletion region. Therefore, the amplitude of the reverse current exponentially reduces. Once the edges of the depletion region are depleted from the minority charge carriers, the diode has reached the steady state reverse bias. Hereafter, only the saturation current passes through the diode. Let's mark the time at which the reverse current gets within a 10% distance to the saturation current. I call this moment T2. The time between T1 and T2 is called the transition time T sub T. The process that I just explained is called the diode reverse recovery. In simple words, the reverse recovery time is the time required for discharging the minority charge carriers at the edges of the depletion region. I showed the reverse recovery time by T sub RR and it equals T sub R plus T sub T. The reverse recovery is an undesirable phenomenon, especially in switching power supplies. We know that the power loss of this PN junction is the product of its uh, voltage and current. During the reverse recovery time, since both the current and voltage are large values, the power loss is considerable. You may say that, the reverse recovery time is very short and therefore we can neglect a pulse of power loss. However, if you imagine that this diode is engaged in a switching power supply that has a switching frequency of 1 MHz, you'll soon notice that in a second the reverse recovery occurs 1 million times. This is something that you do not want to overlook. In this lecture, I discussed the transient response of the diode from on to off state and the reverse recovery mechanism. In the next lecture, I will discuss the PIN diode. Thanks for joining this lecture of Picademia.